Okay, so welcome back. Um, we are going to continue now with uh, Chloé Ouellet Riendo, who was part of the uh, Société d'Histoire de Sherbrooke project, which was part of the Reorg Quebec uh, group. And so she's going to be sharing uh, her experience uh, with uh, the project over there. So thank you very much, uh, Chloé. Welcome. How's everybody doing today? Good? Okay. So sorry, I tend to speak fast sometimes. If I do so, just tell me. All right, um, so like uh, Simon said, I'm uh, Chloé Riendo. I'm from the Chabot Historical Society, uh, located in Quebec. And uh, last year, my wonderful boss and I, Karine Savary, which is the curator and archivist at the SHS, uh, well, we participated in Reorg, and we were invited this year to participate in this workshop to kind of give uh, our experience uh, to the new participants. But then again, I feel like this week I've learned as much as the new participants because I've been working on projects that I didn't necessarily uh, work on on our own project and at the Montreal workshop we had last year. So it was a pretty fun experience for us also this year. There you go. So Sherbrooke, uh, for those of you who don't know, is the southern city of Quebec. It's probably a two hour away drive from Montreal and two hour drive from the United States border. And now uh, we have about 160,000 residents. So we're the sixth uh, largest city of Quebec. And uh, it's the primary economic, political and cultural institutional center of the Eastern Townships region. So hence the name Queen of the Eastern Townships. Um, mainly, we've been a manufacturing center since the 19th century, but over the years, of course, with the downfall of traditional manufacturing sectors, well, we've been more of a knowledge and service-based city. So you're going to see from that that our collection is very varied. So here's us on the little arrow here. So you have a, an old picture. Uh, we're located in what used to be the post office and custom house. The building itself was built in 1885. So it's kind of <laughs> problematic sometimes, and you're going to see later on, I have some pictures of the work that's been going on on our building to restore it and to make it more secure, of course, for our collections. And uh, we're si situated right beside uh, also what's the museum of uh, the, the, sorry, the, Beau the Beaux-Arts, I can't remember. Our gallery, yeah, so right beside it, you can see. Um, but the SHS was founded in 1927, and we've been in that building since 1992. So a little bit about us, so you can see why our collection is composed of a variety of objects. Well, we're both a museum and, a and an archive center service. So uh, we have about 7,000 visitors per year for those both services. And everything is administered by a permanent staff of four members, and of course there's some contractual employees such as myself, and we do have a handful of students that can help us in the summer also. But uh, most of the work is done by uh, the four permanent staff, which uh, Karen, you can see here in the, in the room. Um, so we have two exhibition rooms, one permanent, and the other is used for temporary and sometimes traveling exhibition. We have about two to three uh, temporary exhibition per year on a variety of subjects. Uh, just on top of my head, I can think of the last few years we've had an exhibition on the history of photography, on uh, the commerce or business. We had one on music, on sports, so it's really varied, but it's always with a focus on what's happening in Sherbrooke. And uh, in our permanent exhibition room, we have what's called Sherbrooke, a place to call home. And it's really all about how the city of Sherbrooke was created with the contribution of different communities over the years. So it was an area part of traveling grounds of the First Nations before the city itself was founded by Americans. And later on, it was developed by British and Scots. Uh, it was built by Irish, uh, by French Canadians. It was enriched by the Jewish, by the Italian, by the Syrian community. So you get the idea. We have a variety of people living in our city. And I think it makes a, it makes a quite unique city. And we like it that way. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, but right now we're working on a new exhibition, a permanent one, because the one we have here uh, has been there for eight years, so it's getting quite old, so <laughs> things are like falling apart, old technologies also that aren't very friendly <laughs> to today. 
Um, so we're working on that and working uh, with Reorg has really helped us establish what is in our collection. So it's given us quite a few ideas for temporary exhibition, but also to see what kind of object we can put in our new uh, permanent exhibition. Because I think it's one of the things that's lacking in the one we have right now is it's almost all text and photographs. We do have so, so many beautiful photographs, but it would be fun to like really take your objects also and put them in exhibitions. And um, the team, I think, didn't have an idea of what was actually in the collection. So doing the reorg now, we do know we are aware of what we have and what we can use to really and really promote them in new exhibitions. Uh, we do uh, also animations, we do uh, outside guided tours, we have uh, some summer events also, so we're inside but we're outside our walls also. Um, so we do have columns in local newspapers and some of the teams do also go on radio shows, so we try to be known and we try to attract the public in our walls, also as outside the walls like I just said. And apart from the museum, we are, like I said, a private archive center and that's mainly where I work because I'm like I have many roles, but I'm a research assistant and uh, mostly an assistant to the archivist. So um, we've been accredited since 1990 by BNQ, which is a national archive and library uh, center in the province of Quebec. And really our mission is to preserve, to complete and uh, to disseminate the archives and to help the researchers that they need for their own projects. In that archive center, we do have a library of over 7,500 titles, I would say, pertaining to the history of Sherbrooke and the Eastern Townships. We have about, uh, we're really proud of our, <laughs> of our photographs collection because we have about 130,000 of them on different supports. Um, and we try to really work with that and put it like on our website and really get it out there. And that's what researchers really like. Um, and of course, we have a large collection of newspapers also that is mainly the main attraction, I think, at the Archive Center, because most researchers come for our large collection of newspapers that date back to the 19th century. So, now that you know more about us, you'll see inside I've put some floor plans uh, of what we want to do. So, uh, here's the basement. You see first, sorry, it's like written in French, because <laughs> we do work in French usually. Uh, but yeah, our basement, we have the archive center, so where you see journaux, that's where our newspaper is. We have uh, our storage here, we have our library and the cons consultation room as well as our offices. On the ground floor over there, you see we have our permanent exhibition, we have a kind of small gift shop, a conference room, and mainly where people come in. Uh, and you see where it's written, um, Salle Multi, it was a multi-usage room, uh, but now that's been teared down, so We've lost a lot of space by getting that there down, but it was just to put the, it was added on later on to the building and for architectural purposes uh, and to restore the building to its origins, well, they decided to just tear down everything. And it was quite a hassle for us because we put so much stuff in there that we just had to find more space for that thing, that more space that we didn't have because even <laughs> we did participate in reorg, so, you know, we are missing some space. On the first floor, you have our uh, temporary exhibition room, you have more offices in our little kitchen lunch area, and on the second floor where the Rior project took place, uh, that's our storage room for the objects collection, but also uh, we do share the building with the genealogical society, so they're not the same institution as us, but we do share the building, and they all have the second floor except for that room and our pre-archival backlog room, if I can uh, call it like that. So we only have that small room to work with. It was really hard for us, as you're going to see in later pictures, because uh, we can't really work with all that floor and say, oh, we're going to use all that space for temporary storage and everything. No, it doesn't belong to us. So we would have to go on the first floor. But then again, as you've seen, uh, we didn't have space in those rooms either, and one of them was just tear down, so you're going to see what solutions <laughs> we came up with later on. But now I'll talk a little bit about more of the collection. So uh, we have two storage rooms. The one I just so showed you on the floor plan, which is the one we worked on for the Rio project. And we do have an off-site uh, storage where all of our bigger objects are stored, but wasn't part of our Rio. And uh, so I say bigger objects, so we didn't have a lot of heavy lifting to do 
in our real project on the objects, <laughs> but like with the storage units and everything else, it's a whole other story. So don't worry, we used a lot of our muscles and we, we sweat a lot. So yeah, it was a lot of hard, hard work. Um, so yeah, uh, what can I tell you about our collection? Well, we have approximately 2,500 objects and artifacts. And since we're collecting anything pertaining to the history of the city itself, well, it's quite varied, like I said. So we have daily life objects, such as kitchenware, uh, toys. We have large collection also of uh, cameras because there was a local photographer that donated all of his collection and it's humongous. And um, we do have also commercial and industrial objects. So we have old cash registers that are really cool. Really, if you ask me, it's one of my favorite objects. Uh, we do have also industrial objects like well, railroad, railroad tools, that's a hard word. <laughs> and um, yeah, we have textiles, we have woods, we have metals. So we have to keep that in mind when we're doing a reorg to make sure that the room is stable enough for all of those types of objects. And that wasn't too much of a worry because that, that room is pretty stable climate and temperature wise, but still we had to keep that in mind because for example, we do have a window, so we had to cover that up and make sure the metals are like on the outside walls because those are the most stable objects and things like that to keep in mind while doing our reorg. So our challenges. What were our challenges? Well, like many of you, like we've seen today, uh, it's the space, <laughs> of course. Uh, like you've seen, I don't have the, the volume of the room per se, um, but it was it was small, <laughs> like what you see on the picture is the room. So that's me in the door taking the picture. So you can't really go far into the room. So you enter and it's shelves, tables, boxes on the floor, uh, objects lying on the boxes, objects lying on the foldable table that we don't know why it's there, uh, <laughs> chairs in the alley. So <laughs> you get the picture. Oh yeah, you see rugs on the floor also. So yeah, we had to <laughs> work with that. Um, we had also objects that weren't listed in that room, and we had objects outside of that room also, like inner offices that just weren't accessioned yet, or they were used in other exhibition and just never returned. So we had to keep track and bring back all of our objects into that room, make sure they were all safe. Um, we had what we call non-collection items. I don't know if it's the right term, but like packing materials and. Uh, stuff that just is not supposed to be there, materials that were used for exhibition and stuff like that. We just wanted to get it out of the way. And of course, uh, we had no functional area. So like no area to document everything, to like clean the objects, to work with them. So we wanted to make sure that we could actually uh, have an area like that in our future storage. And uh, another of a problem was our documentation system because it was on multiple databases with FileMaker. We had two FileMaker databases and uh, we had one online, so on a like homemade like database. And uh, they were incomplete. Uh, some information were on like two databases. Some objects were just on none of the uh, databases. So we really wanted to make sure to put all of those information together on one database. So that was one of our goal with this project also. And uh, yeah, the location system, I don't know what to tell you, was just incomplete, inconsistent. Uh, usually we just relied on our memory, uh, giving up searching in the, the databases and just went into the, the storage room to say, okay, yeah, we'll use this object for the exhibition. And uh, sometimes that, when we, after it was used, it was either put back maybe not in its proper location, just where there was a shell space, or it stayed in our offices. So not ideal. It was really a waste of time for us, because we can, like, you know, we knew we had this object, but we couldn't find it, so we just gave up sometimes and just took another object. So we wanted to make sure we could remedy that situation. And um, also, uh, while going through that storage, we noticed, like I talked a bit before, uh, like our accession numbers on the on the objects themselves weren't always complete. Like you know, sometimes you, know, you put the year first. Um, well, sometimes if it's 1992, it would be written 92. So there were some missing numbers, and 
those numbers didn't necessarily fit with what we had in our databases, so we just wanted to make sure. Uh, one of our goals was to re-identify all of those objects, so we went back, like I said earlier, with acrylic paint and re-identified everything with the proper numbers. But, you know, you have to wait for it to dry each time you put a, a new acrylic like paint on it, so that was quite time-consuming. Uh, but still, we really, we really wanted to do it to make sure that our location system and documentation system was up to par. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the challenges. So that's before reorg. Like I said, you see uh, in the back, there's a table with uh, <laughs> collection objects with just packing materials sitting on top. Uh, we don't know why. Under the table, also, there's objects. There's rugs on the floor. And um, you can see, also, the shell space wasn't used properly. There's like quite a lot of space in between the, the shelves themselves. So sometimes you see a box that's taking the whole place, but right beside it, maybe you're going to find like a small decorative pin. So there's like this much space in between the shelves. So that's not ideal. Uh, and the alleys were really small. So we didn't use really step ladders because it was just too hard to get the step ladder in the door. Uh, so we used chairs. And that's not very, very safe for us. And apparently not for the objects either. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we wanted to, <laughs> to change that. So what we did uh, was really to rethink the space. So that's before and after. What we, we did essentially, because, you know, we're history, uh, we have master's in history and we're not mathematicians. So <laughs> we're, really, we're really bad with numbers, the both of us, the, me and Karine, I think. Well, I'm talking for myself, maybe not Karine. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we just like printed out, we, we measured everything and we did a plan like really to scale. And we, cut, we made some cutouts of our units that we already had. We just laid it out and see, see what we could place, how we could manage our storage units that we already had. Because for that, we already had clean storage units. So we could use them. They were adaptable also. We could like use them and put in more shelves in. So we just wanted to like move them around so we could circulate better. Um, and we wanted to make wall space also because the wall space just wasn't used before. Uh, what else did we, yeah, we wanted to create, a, you see like there's a big white space. It's because we had one big object on site that we wanted to make a space for it. Um, and by putting the shelves like on the other way, uh, we could use the ends of those shelves and put chicken wire and use it to hang stuff. And uh, for other wall spaces, we could hang really, really long textiles we had. And we had photographer backgrounds, also photography backgrounds, that we could roll up and just hang on the wall. So we did that like where the white space is uh, on top of the big object. So we were not losing the wall space. And uh, where there's the blue square, that's where we actually did a foldable table you're going to see on another picture. Uh, but it's where we, we wanted to put our uh, workspace. So it's a foldable table that's mounted on the wall. So when we don't use it, we can fold it back. So it creates more space for movement and everything. So it's safer. And on top of that, you're going to see we put some pegboard also to hang some long and thin objects or like really small plates because we do have small, not plates, but plaques. I don't know how to say it, but yeah. So like I said, we didn't know where like to put everything <laughs> in for a temporary swing space. Um, but fortunately enough, our neighbors are quite nice, so uh, they closed for two weeks in the summer, so they agreed to lend us their space, so what you see is a genealogical society. Uh, they also lent us some tables that they had on site, so we could put, uh, like, temporarily put all of our ob objects on them, and we could also use the hallway. So the second picture is the hallway where we put some workstations, like we did have the, the work table with everything, all the, the tools lined out, like you saw in previous presentation. But for us, what was important also was, like I said, to re-identify all of our objects, so we did a station for that. It was also important for us to clean the objects, because most of them hadn't been touched in, I don't know how many years. So there was a lot of dust and grime. I can't tell you how many times I changed a pair of gloves just because they were so dirty. So it was important for us to really dust them off. And of course, we wanted to take photographs of every object to put in our new database. So that's the, what the workstation is for. And uh, of course, uh, you know, there's four tables there. So for 2,500 objects, we eventually ran out of table space. 
So what we did, we took one unit from a storage. We got all of the objects out. We, I did say we undid the, what was the word? We undid our shelving. Dismantle. Dismantle, that's the word I was looking for. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's the word yesterday. No, don't remember it when I'm in front, of course. So we dismantled all of our units and we rebuilt them in the temporary storage space to put temporarily your objects. And then after that, we of course kept some in the storage that we just moved around. And we put the objects back in, then we dismantled the, them again in the temporary to rebuild <laughs> in the good storage. So there was a lot of dismantling, building, dismantling, building, <laughs> and like you're just shuffling objects around. But that's what you have to work with like when you have really small spaces, you have like no choice. And like I said, so they're closed for two weeks in the summer. So what is usually, I think, a few months project for most of the Rio participants? Well, it was a two-week project for us, like a 10-day. And uh, two team also, two team, uh, two members in that team, so me and uh, Karine. And of course, in those two weeks, I had to get a super great cold, and I had to pass it on. Oh, of course. <laughs> So not ideal. So that's why, like, the title is dealing with the, the unexpected. Well, deal with colds, deal with uh, mystery objects that just appear from boxes, uh, deal with the fact that identifying objects and cleaning them and everything takes so much more time than you, than you plan. But, you know, in a two-week period, it's really hard to readjust. But when you do it on a, a larger time period, it, it's a bit easier to readjust. Just, just make sure you do readjust because you're going to have to. <laughs> I think in all the projects, you're going to have to readjust. That's my, like, my number one tip. Like, <laughs> expect to readjust and work with it, you know? So, yeah. So, cleaning and tagging, like I said before. Uh, that was a station. So, we got everything out in the cart. We cleaned everything. We retagged everything. We let them dry on the table. We put them in a temporary space. And in the temporary space, we tried to already group the objects by size, but sometimes it was going so fast that we didn't really have time and we just had to work with the space we had. But we did try to do that because we knew that going back in, the objects were going to be grouped by size and not by type like they used to be, or like by collection maybe, more than by type, because we really wanted to work with our shelf space and make sure like each shelf was optimized. So like I said, we changed the orientation of the available units. So that's dismantling them on the first picture. So they were coming towards us in the door. So we just changed them around. So when we came in, we do now have a big walkway there that we can work with and we can move objects around without banging in the shelves. That's so great. We can push a cart around <laughs> in between the alleys now. We can put a step ladder. So that's really, really, really amazing. Um, like I said, we did create open spaces to mount pegboard. Uh, that's me drilling into the wall, so now I'm super handy with a drill, which I wasn't before. Now I'm super handy with the circular saw after this week, which I wasn't before. So, you know, reorg is such a great learning process. You know, you were talking about the conversion. I'm converted also. <laughs> so that's our foldable table that you can see also. So you can just, like, bring in the, the legs and it just folds on itself, so it's super, super useful. I'm going to say that whole thing, super useful. Uh, yeah, we, we did have some help sometimes with the students. We trusted one enough to let him come in, because we do have trust issues. <laughs> we do have trouble letting other people touch the objects. Even me, it was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> like, I had to really, like, press on and, like, don't worry, I'm going to be careful. <laughs> so, yeah, he was a, he was a trusted one. Uh, also, we did have a lot of really, really small objects and a lot of, well, not a lot of textile, but quite a few enough that we decided to get boxes to uh, really, like, uh, for the shelf space to have more of it. So by grouping, like, small objects into the boxes, well, we can stack some boxes on the shelves now. And, of course, uh, they're safer now and it's really archival grade boxes also. And they're always either separated or they're, like, really safe into cotton pads and stuff like that. And the textiles are now boxed and some are hanging also, you're going to see. So now, 
by moving things around, by putting in more shelves in the units we already had, because we didn't buy more units, we just bought more shelves and we inserted them in it. Uh, we created a hang station also, so we bought poles that just fits right in those shelves, so it's super useful. The word of the day. <laughs> uh, so you can see now that really your objects are grouped by size, and, but of course there's a safe space for the handling of, of the objects. And that's a really big object that you can see also in the picture. It's our har uh, harmonium. Yeah. So now it's like on a, a wheeled peg thing. I don't know the word platform thing. Thank you. Hey. Okay. So did I go through everything? I think so. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so we redid the little white sheets that you can see of paper. We did the whole, uh, we redid the location system because like I said in the beginning, it was really incomplete. So what we did, uh, we took a sheet of paper for each of the shelves, we, we sticked it on it and we wrote every accession number that was going on that shelf. So afterwards, uh, it was just easy to take all the, the, of the papers and say, okay, that's unit one, shelf A. Well, we know that all of those objects, we have the numbers already, so I didn't have to go through like every alley back again, I just sat down on the computer and just put in our new locations number in our new database. So we got that tip actually from our Montreal workshop. We used it and it, it's great. <laughs> so that's pretty much it uh, for us. So in conclusion, we, contrary to, pop, non contrary to popular belief, we didn't need to tear down any walls to make more space. We just had to use this space more efficiently uh, to create uh, new, new ways of storing things. And with the help of Reorg community, well, we came up with a lot of ideas. Uh, and now I think our collection has room to grow because recently we just bought in new smaller shells that can fit also in, in it. So we're getting more space still again. And we did actually get some few ideas for our frames also this week. So maybe we're going to optimize that. So, you know, it's a continuing project. Uh, it's never finished. It's never perfect. So we're always trying to keep working on it uh, still today. Um, but the challenge with us a bit like with uh, Ken, uh, our building is municipally owned. So we can't really make down like big changes. So that's why I said tearing down walls was quite impossible. <laughs> Um, but we are having some troubles uh, with the fire department in our city. Um, they think that it's not, like, not safe and it's crammed up and <laughs> they would wish for us to like, cut down a foot of our units because they want the space to make sure that they can put in the water and everything if there's a fire. So apparently it's not safe for the workers. Like We're more about safety for the objects, but you know we have to make do with the fire people <laughs> of our city. <laughs> Um, so we've been in talks for quite a few years now, I think, to like see what we can do with the municipality and with the fire department, uh, but it hasn't moved. But like right now, since we're in the middle of renovations, as you can see, uh, while we're talking about what we can do, maybe uh, the genealogical society is going to move, uh, but it's not sure. So we would gain that whole second floor that I put just back so we would get all of that space and not just a little one room. So that would be really ideal, but you know, we're not sure if the municipality wants to house them somewhere else. But I think they would gladly go somewhere else also because like you saw in the other pictures, they are crammed up too in their little second floor. Feel maybe invaded by us actually. Um, so there's exterior construction going on right now, as you can see, like that's like recent pictures in the year. Um, being done to the foundations, but those works are going to come inside like in the next few months. So we're kind of waiting to like make further adjustments to our storage room because if they do move the genealogical society, well, maybe we can like move the storage space to a bigger area. Maybe then we can tear, tear down walls this time for real and make a huge storage room. We don't know yet. Um, but we're really hopeful for the, for the future changes that are coming because like in the archive center and for the objects, uh, the space is really maxed up. Like we're using it to, to its full potential, I think, even with reorg. Um, but reorg is gonna help us in that move if we do have to like move the storage space somewhere else because now we know where everything is. We have an idea of our whole collection because 
there was a lot of objects that were in boxes that now are unboxed, so we, it's larger than we thought, and now we're aware of that, so if we have to move it somewhere else, well, we're going to know what we have to move, we're going to know what our needs are way better than the first time we did reorg, so maybe a reorg, <laughs> reorg uh, version 2.0 at the Chabot Historical Society in the upcoming year, we don't know, but uh, what I know is that we're well equipped now to, to do that again, so yeah, thank you. <laughs>